Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is April Fool's Day, April 1st, 2021, but this is not an April Fool's video. We're going to seriously try to talk, just as one fan to another, about possibilities at the top of the draft, especially what the 49ers are doing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, pundits don't talk about this enough, right? If you're close to the NFL, you want to believe the fiction that teams approach the draft and they're just interested in getting the best available athlete, that nothing else matters that the best athlete when your draft pick comes is going to be who you're going to pick, or that you're going to have specific needs. And, of course, if I need a wide receiver and it's my turn to pick and there's a great wide receiver on the board, I'm going to take him, right? In my opinion, that's a myth. That's not the way the real world operates. Now, let me pause here and just say, look, I'm not an NFL insider. I'm not. I'm just a YouTube person. I'm just a fan of the NFL like many of you. We're just talking fan to fan. We're just speculating on the NFL draft. I have absolutely no insider information. Let's get back to the discussion. I believe the way the real world works is that different positions have different salary scales. Right? Teams understand that they need a quarterback. They also understand that if they have a fairly decent quarterback or someone with any upside whatsoever who's a veteran, that they're going to have to pay that guy at least $25 million per year. They understand right now that for good quarterbacks, above average quarterbacks, the pay scale is a lot higher, right? Think about the pay scale for quarterbacks established by the signings of Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Patrick Mahomes. Think about what Russell Wilson's market value would be if he were on the market right now. Right? Aaron Rodgers is underpaid by today's standards. So think about the cost savings that a team realizes if they can get a quarterback who might not even be as good as an excellent vet, might not be Deshaun Watson, might not be Russell Wilson, but is within range and is under a rookie salary cap. So we understand Justin Herbert, picked just last year in the draft, is grossly underpaid. If Justin Herbert were a free agent this year, he would probably command more than $30 million a year just based on what he showed his first year in the league. The San Diego Chargers are literally saving more than $20 million per year by having Justin Herbert under a rookie salary cap. Think about Josh Allen, right? Understand, when you have a young guy and he's under a rookie salary cap, you're saving tens of millions of dollars. Now, all of these teams hope that they aren't going to be picking at the top of the NFL draft on a regular basis, right? They want to be good. They want to be one of the teams picking at the bottom of the first round, not at the top of the first round. If you're up around the top of the first round organically, that means that you've just had a terrible season. That means that you need improvement. So understand, the teams at the top, the Jacksonville Jaguars, for example, they almost certainly are going to pick a quarterback in this draft. We already know that Urban Meyer wants Trevor Lawrence, right? Let's face it, too, all things being equal. Owning an NFL team is owning a business. You understand that Zach Wilson doesn't play in the South. You understand that Justin Fields doesn't play in the South. Trey Lance doesn't play in the South. 
who plays in the South who's very successful? Who, at a minimum, is within range, talent-wise, of the others? That's Trevor Lawrence. You're getting a great talent, and you're getting a PR bonanza by picking him. Right? The fiction everyone wants you to believe is that Trevor Lawrence is far ahead of the other quarterbacks. We know when he was in high school and Justin Fields was in high school, they were in the same tournament or whatever, and Justin Fields was the guy who won the awards. I don't believe there's that much difference between Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields or Zach Wilson. But I believe if you're a team from the South, and you're picking a quarterback. The clear pick from a PR perspective, who's within range talent-wise, within a deviation, we'll, we'll get fancy here, within a standard deviation talent-wise, is Trevor Lawrence. Right? Take the guy who's popular in the South. Well, let's talk about the second pick. Now, I'm a Pac-12 guy. I didn't go to USC, but I can tell you that Sam Darnold is actually a decent quarterback. He has a lot of talent. Right? I know skeptics will say, hey, Sam Darnold throws too many picks. Well, I can tell you Sam Darnold, when he's on, has few peers. Understand my bias, too. I was on here last year before the draft telling people, that Justin Herbert was the best quarterback in the draft. I still believe so. Right? Joe Burrow just doesn't have the ceiling, the higher ceiling that Justin Herbert has. Right? Herbert, I think I think very highly of Burrow, but Herbert has the stronger arm. Right? Herbert is the better athlete. Right? Let's also face it, too. Tua went before Herbert in last year's draft. Tua doesn't have the physical attributes that Justin Herbert has. Also, in the moment, there is some politics involved. Right? Tua from Alabama, national champion one year. Uh, people followed the story. He was on TV. Now, that has nothing to do with talent level. But we understood that Tua was the more fan-friendly pick than Justin Herbert, who was relatively unknown. We get that that factors into these draft picks. In other words, talent matters, but so do the politics. Well, let's just say Trevor Lawrence goes first. You're the Jets picking second. The biggest problem with Sam Darnold is that, guess what, folks? Now he's been in the league. Now he's a veteran. Now he's close to getting 20 plus million dollars a year, which is what he would get as a starting quarterback in the National Football League. The Jets might feel he's a decent quarterback, might believe that he's not yet a superstar. One of the easiest ways to control your salary cap, one of the easiest ways to give a new head coach low expectations to work with, a fan base that's not going to demand the playoffs your first year, a fan base that's going to understand, hey, this is going to take a while, is to swap out a decent veteran quarterback for one that's under the rookie pay scale. So for all the Jets' needs, and they have several, I believe with the second pick in this draft, the Jets are going to take a quarterback. If the Jets were bigger risk takers, they might trade down in the draft. But let's look at this draft. The problem with the Jets trading down in the draft and then hoping to get a quarterback is that the Atlanta Falcons picking at number four might want to get the heir apparent to Matt Ryan, who's older, 
who's now in his later 30s. Right? No one knows what Atlanta's going to do, but it might involve getting a quarterback. Let's go down a little further. Miami Dolphins at six. I believe they realize now, and let's be blunt here, that they made a mistake picking Tua ahead of Justin Herbert. If Justin Fields is still on the board, Miami might well take a Justin Fields. Let me say this. I don't say it cavalierly. Right? Two is a great guy. Two is efficient at what he does. He's not close to the athlete Trey Lance is. Trey Lance, much higher ceiling than Tua. Much higher ceiling. Right? If you're Miami with the six pick, why aren't you thinking of a quarterback? For talent reasons. Right? Two is a little undersized in the position. We want to believe that every smaller quarterback is going to be the next Russell Wilson, the next Drew Brees. Understand, those guys are outliers. Right? It's hard to pick a guy who turns into Russell Wilson. Jury's still out on Baker Mayfield, isn't it? Let's go a little bit further down the draft. You're Matt Rule. You like a great offense. You're the Carolina Panthers. You're sitting there at the eighth spot. Right? I'm sure if I'm the Jets and I'm thinking, hey, let me trade down and pick up a quarterback later in this draft. You have to realize that Carolina might be interested in a quarterback in this draft. Especially now that Deshaun Watson who, according to rumor, Carolina was interested in before all this massage news broke, might no longer be politically viable. Right? No one's going to want to trade for a guy who's going to have to be out of the league on a suspension. Right? And so, the Jets have a problem. They don't want to pay Sam Darnold $25 plus million a year they need a quarterback, but they can't trade down. Understand, the team picking ninth are the Denver Broncos. Right? Denver's a team that was interested in Deshaun Watson. Drew Locke doesn't seem to be the guy in their future. Drew Locke is kind of like Sam Darnold. Talented, but the team might feel not elite. If you have that guy as your starter, you're paying $25 million. If you're cost conscious and want to save money, that's where you might want to save money. Get a promising guy picked in the top 10 for more than $15 million in salary per year less. So, we don't know what's really going on, do we? We know San Francisco traded up. We know Jacksonville's taking Trevor Lawrence. We don't know if San Francisco's talking to the Jets. If San Francisco has a Jones for Zach Wilson. If the Jets, on their internal boards, have Zach Wilson rated ahead of Trey Lance or Justin Fields. Poker's happening right now. Things aren't cut and dry. So, of course, the Niners have Jimmy Garoppolo, a guy who got to the Super Bowl the year before last, a guy who had a double-digit lead in the second half of that Super Bowl game against Pat Mahomes. Right here in the Bay Area, by the way, 49er faithful, and I talk to them, firmly believe, firmly believe, that if Garoppolo hit Sanders on that bomb, the Niners would have won that game. Up here, the knock on Garoppolo comes down to one play. He didn't hit Sanders on that bomb in the second half of that Super Bowl to put the title away. 
And so San Francisco's in a position where the press is reporting, oh, Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence, done deal. Jets, Zach Wilson, done deal. So here in the Bay Area, the 49er faithful are openly saying, well, why don't we just announce who we're picking? Why is it that hard? Why can't the Niners who've said, hey, Jimmy's our starting quarterback for this coming year. Why can't the Niners just say, oh, and by the way, we're picking Trey Lance. By the way, we're picking Justin Fields. Why can't the Niners just make the announcement? Have everyone excited draft day. Have the first few picks just run off the board. It's because it's complicated, isn't it? Again, who knows what conversations the Jets and Niners are having. Let's say, too, you're San Francisco. Now, the feeling, with me at least, is that the Niners want the quarterback with the highest ceiling. Let's be real here. Let's be as blunt as we can be. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, none of them have the legs of Trey Lance. None of them. Right? Just flat out. None of them. In terms of operating a pro-style offense, none of them had more responsibility at the line of scrimmage than Trey Lance, who went to Carson Wentz's alma mater. Just like Carson Wentz hit the floor running, NFL people might feel that Trey Lance has that capability. Right? But Trey Lance isn't the glamour name, is he? That a Justin Fields is. Aren't there more wrinkles here? Everyone understands that the Niners are ready to win right now. Folks, they had an incredible amount of injuries last year. Incredible amount of injuries. Bosa, their main pass rusher, out. Debo Samuels, key wide receiver, out. Their quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, out. Right, the Niners feel that if they could just get everyone healthy and in the stadium, they're going to make the playoffs. If they just play up to their talent level, Niners are loaded, folks. They make the playoffs. Last year, they had a great draft. Ayuk, the wide receiver, was picked. The Niners are loaded. Let's remember, too, they destroyed Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs to get to the Super Bowl. Right? They ran rough shot over good teams, the Vikings. Just blew them out. Got to the Super Bowl and then were handling the Chiefs. So I believe the Niners don't want a rookie quarterback to play for them during most of the regular season. What they're looking for is an Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick situation. One man's opinion, again, I'm just a fan. Where you have the vet who can win games. You have the understudy learning from the vet. You have rival defensive coordinators caught up with a big dilemma. Do we prepare for the vet? Let's say Jimmy Garoppolo. And then in the middle of the season, have San Francisco switch to Trey Lance, who moves a hell of a lot better than Jimmy Garoppolo, who brings a running dimension to the offense, and have that catch us unprepared. Let's remember, too, a guy named Jim Harbaugh used to be the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. Right? That setup, where you had the vet play the first half of the year, then you had the young Bobo guy play the second half of the year. Help the Niners get to the Super Bowl. So then Jim's brother, 
John Harbaugh, one of the better coaches in the AFC, had a vet, Joe Flacco, for the first half of the year. Swaps out that vet for Lamar Jackson the second half of the year. And that Baltimore team ended up in the playoffs. Lost to San, uh, to San Diego, but they caught a lot of teams off guard. Right? One of the secrets in the NFL is that these defensive coordinators come up with game plans well in advance of the week they play you. So if they have a game plan for Jimmy Garoppolo and suddenly they're dealing with Trey Lance, that's a big problem, isn't it? Defenders are in the wrong place. Quarterback takes off on a run. Look at Trey Lance highlights, by the way, here online. And the defense is out of position. Well, let's talk about some variables here because there are many. Niners just gave up a lot of picks to get to the third spot. Right? Understand the team picking fourth in the draft. Atlanta has a quarterback with whom current 49er head coach, who was the offensive coordinator at the time, Kyle Shanahan, got to the Super Bowl. Right? If anyone knows a Kyle Shanahan offense, folks, it's Matt Ryan. Now understand, Matt Ryan's in his later 30s. What happens if San Francisco decides, you know what? We want Trey Lance. We want Trey Lance. Let's say they know from Scuttlebutt that the Atlanta Falcons want Justin Fields. Right? Maybe the Niners are committed to Trey Lance, but aren't committed to Jimmy Garoppolo, who's been injured. Understand, Matt Ryan's been healthy. I could see, I mean, there's so many possibilities here, it boggles the mind, but I could see the Niners saying, hey, you know what, Atlanta, we'll trade down to the fourth spot. We'll give you the younger Jimmy. You give us Matt Ryan and draft picks. The draft picks are the profit part of the transaction for the Niners for moving down. You promise us that you're not going to take the guy we want. Trey Lance, the mobile quarterback with the gun, who's younger than everyone else. He's only 20. You give us Matt Ryan, who is healthy most of the time. In other words, I can wait on Trey Lance to develop. I'll have a quarterback as my starting quarterback if I'm Kyle Shanahan, who I know could get us to the Super Bowl because he's already gotten one of my offenses to the Super Bowl. Right? We'll give you Jimmy, who seems to spend as much time in the trainer's room getting treatment for injuries as he does on the field. We'll give you Jimmy if I'm Atlanta I'm thinking, wow, I've just gotten younger at the quarterback position. And I'm able to get the quarterback prospect I want. Right? Think it through. Let's talk about another possibility. Right? You know that the Saints right now have a guy playing for backup money who, of course, has made a Pro Bowl, who, of course, has won a national title in college, who was the first pick in a draft, who once threw for more than 5,000 yards in a season. Now, again, the Niners have latitude. Right? Think about it. If I want to save money, if I want to go from Jimmy's salary, which is more than $20 million a year, down to Jameis Winston's deal for this coming year, which is backup money. Let's stop playing games here. It's backup money. Maybe I want to think about trading Garoppolo, who Bill Belichick believes in, who was recently in a Super Bowl, who, I can tell you from watching Niner games, is extremely accurate. Has a lot of talent. 
when he's healthy. Why wouldn't the Saints want to swap out Jameis for Jimmy Garoppolo? Right? Taysom Hill, folks, is not going to carry the Saints. Sean Payton, doesn't he value a quarterback who plays exactly Jimmy Garoppolo's game? Hitting wide receivers on slant patterns. Drop back quarterback who's extremely accurate. Right? Obviously, these comments are causing a lot of stuff happening outside where I am right now. But let's continue. Right? Let me say this, too. The Carolina Panthers pick eighth. They need a quarterback. Here in the Bay Area, people are speculating that Kyle Shanahan might want Teddy Bridgewater, who's extremely accurate but who doesn't have a lot of arm strength. Let's just call it as it is. This is not a PC site, right? Well, with Jameis, if we're going to include a team without an early draft pick in this mix, you get a lot of arm strength. You can stretch the field in ways you can't with Teddy. Also, doesn't Teddy have the same problem Jimmy has? High injury risk. Misses more games than he should. Right? If the Niners were to make a move for Teddy. Right? Were to trade Jimmy for Teddy and get back picks. They save some money on the salary. But do they get a guy who's durable enough to go the 17 games? Or to take you deep in the season? where then he can turn over the team to the rookie. Right? So there are a lot of moving pieces here. I don't buy the Mac Jones rumors. I don't think you trade up to the third pick to take Mac Jones. Right? Mac Jones can't move like Trey Lance. I believe the pick here that the Niners are going to shock a lot of people with, with the third pick in the draft, is to take Trey Lance. I believe whether Jimmy Garoppolo starts next season as the Niners starting quarterback is a huge open question. Because I believe a lot of teams are out there with quarterbacks who might be available to the Niners. Right? If you're cost-conscious, Jameis Winston, Teddy Bridgewater. If you have a win-now mentality and want a veteran quarterback with whom Kyle Shanahan is well aware, Matt Ryan. Right? If the Niners keep Jimmy and pick up Trey Lance, then I believe that increases their chances of making the playoffs if Garoppolo can stay healthy because he's liked in the clubhouse he knows the personnel he knows the offense and the contrast between him and Trey Lance is so great that when the Niners bring in Trey Lance defenses are not going to be prepared the contrast between Garoppolo and Justin Fields, who I understand was spectacular at his pro day at Ohio State, isn't as great as the contrast between Garoppolo and Trey Lance. That's why I believe Trey Lance is the likely 49er pick. Right? Whoever the Niners trade for, Trey Lance is an athlete. Unlike any other quarterback prospect in this draft. I believe the Niners know it. I believe they understand that in a two-quarterback system, like the Saints have, with Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston, like they had last year with Drew Brees and Taysom Hill, with a two-quarterback system, Trey Lance is a unique talent because he contrasts more with the old guard quarterbacks than these other quarterback prospects. Anyway, those are just some random thoughts from one NFL fan to you. 
Let me know your thoughts. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.